So you have a pretty good grasp on your physical game in bowling. Maybe you throw it really well in practice, really well in your warm-ups. But when the going gets a little stressful, how do you respond? Do you struggle with the mental game in bowling? If so, I got some tips for you that can be helpful using a book that I recently read and I would highly recommend by Olympic gold medalist Lonnie Bassham. And that book is called With Winning in Mind. Okay guys, so you're in warmups, you're in practice, you're throwing it really well, the strikes are coming with ease, and then the game starts, or the tournament starts, and your mental game starts to waver a bit. Is that you? Have you struggled with this before? I know that I have, and this book has been really, really instrumental for me to help combat some of that as I go. So in the book, Lonnie Bassham talks about why winners win, and he asks the question, are you a participant in your sport? or are you a winner? And winners expect to come there and win. Participants, however, they hope to make a good shot. They hope to make the cut. They hope to make some money, but winners expect it. And that all has to do with our self image and how we visualize ourselves as bowlers. So Mr. Bassham talks about self image and that is our habits plus our attitude. So our habits are how we are in the, on the lanes and practice using smart practice tips. I have a video on that. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it below. He also talks about our performance and that is a direct relationship with our self image. So if we have a negative self image of ourselves as a bowler, we're just hoping to do well instead of expecting it, that is going to reflect in our performance. If you're not a really positive person and you want to change that, you definitely can. So when you're picturing positive thoughts, there's no room for negative ones. Practicing helps you to combat fear and anxiety on the lanes. So Mr. Bastan talks about goals, and this is a big topic that I love to talk about in all aspects of life. When we make goals for ourselves, and I encourage you to do this, make smart goals, things that are obtainable, specific, realistic, and have a plan for those. Write them down. You're more likely to achieve your goals when you write them down and maybe even share them with a trusted friend. Write down what your goal is, when you want to achieve it by, and why. Why is a big piece. When you have that emotional part of why you want to win your tournament or win your league or make your average go up 10 pins this year, whatever it is for you, have that emotional piece behind it and it's gonna help you to get there. Now, Mr. Bassham talks about the three phases of a shot. He was an Olympic shooter, but the principles in this book directly relate to bowling and other sports as well. So the first phase is anticipation. And I think of that as when I'm sitting on the bench, waiting for my turn, thinking about where I'm gonna stand, what ball I'm gonna throw, where I'm gonna throw it, how fast I'm gonna throw it, things like that. You wanna have that all planned out before you get there. But the anticipation phase, in my opinion, is also our pre-shot routine. I would love to hear what you guys do in your pre-shot routines and how it helps you. For me, it's something that helps me to go onto automatic pilot. So when I am nervous or in a stressful situation on the lanes, my body knows what to do. It can kind of take over. And so for me, I like to throw around my grip sack as I'm sitting waiting for my turn. When I get up there, I get my ball. I wipe it down three times with my chamois. I put some air on my hands. I blow into my thumb hole to give a little bit of a tackiness. I also take a deep breath. This pays dividends. And when I forget to do this, it sure shows on the lanes, especially in a stressful situation. Take a deep breath, close your eyes perhaps, and visualize where you want that ball to go. Visualize a past really good strike or picking up that spare. And then I also say to myself the word trust. I trust myself and I trust my ball. The second phase is the action phase. This is actually when we are doing, when we're making the shot. At this point, we're not thinking about every little detail of our shot because it's gonna to be too robotic and probably not be the best shot we can make. That's what you're supposed to save for practice time, working on things like that. At this point, you wanna just make your shot, autograph your shot. You wanna just do it the way that you know how to do it. And one of the things that Mr. Bassham says that he thinks about when he's making a shot in the Olympics or a shot to win whatever it is, he thinks about follow through. And that's the same for bowlers and golfers and other sports. 
follow through. So I think about that too. I just think about focusing on my follow through when, right when I'm releasing the ball and making sure it's the best follow through that I know how to make. The last phase is the reinforcement phase. And I do believe this is probably the most important phase because this is what we say to ourselves after the shot. How often do we as bowlers get frustrated because we pulled the ball or we dropped the ball or we threw it in the gutter or we missed the spare or we just totally missed the pocket, how often do we get frustrated? And that's a normal human response. But if we can control that on the lanes, that's going to pay dividends in our mental game when the going gets hard. Saying positive things, not negative words or negative physical actions can really help us to stay in the moment, not raise our blood pressure and get us frustrated because frustration on the lanes shows in that shot and the shots to come typically. I love watching the pro bowlers on tour, the PWBA and the PB and I love watching the bowlers that really respond positively. One of the bowlers that I really love to watch and love how she responds to her shots, good or bad, is Rocio Restrepo. If you've ever seen her, when she makes a shot, she's always telling herself, good shot, clapping her hands, giving herself a little pat on the back, even when she rings a 10 pin or the shot doesn't go exactly as planned, if she makes a good shot and it hits pocket but doesn't strike, that's not a reason to stomp around and swear. It's a reason to say, you know, good shot because that's reinforcing what you did. Maybe you may need to make a little adjustment and that's okay, but recognizing that it was a good shot puts you in a positive place and keeps you there. When you make a good shot, say, that's like me. That comes from this book. That's like me. When you make a strike, that's like me. When you make two in a row or three in a row or five in a row, whatever it is, that's like me. That's like me to shoot a five bagger. That's like me to pick up my spare. That's like me to make my 10 pins. And on the topic of the 10 pin, every right-handed bowler's favorite, right? Say things like, I love the 10 pin. Oh good, I get to practice another 10 pin. If you're telling yourself, don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it, something negative like that, change it to a positive. How about saying, make it, hit your mark, follow through. I love the 10 pin. And before you know it, everybody in your league is gonna be coming up to you and saying, boy, you make a lot of 10 pins, tell me your secret. Another tip from the book is keeping a journal. I love to keep a bowler's journal. I love to keep a little notebook in my bag, keeping track of what you do on pair to pair in your center or other centers you go to, how your ball reacts, what balls you use, your scores, but also you can journal your goals there. You can put affirmations. I love affirmations for different parts of my life. I would love to hear if you guys say or do affirmations yourself. For bowling, this can pay dividends. I'm a 200 average bowler, or I'm a 230 average bowler, or whatever it is for you. I'm, I'm a 100 bowler, whatever it is for you, whatever your goals are. I, I help my team to win games by making my points. Things like that can really pay dividends in your games. Affirmations can really help to change your self-image as well. And I'd like to read from you on page 100 of, of Lonnie's book, a few affirmations that I like and I've adapted. I perform better in matches than in practice. These are, these are positive things. Maybe you don't really do that yet or you don't really believe that, but the more you say it, again, you're gonna trick your mind into believing it. If I start well, I finish well. And I've, I've changed that one to, I start and I end my games with strength and confidence. How good is it to start off a tournament or a game with a strike or even with a spare? How not so good does it feel when you start with an open or a split in the first game? So have that confidence in that first shot. Do your pre-shot routine and follow through. I can count on a good performance, especially under pressure. These are important things to say regularly. And before you know it, you're going to trick your mind into believing them. Another quote along those lines from this book on page 57 is, the self image cannot tell the difference between what actually happens and what is vividly imagined. So we can almost trick our brains into changing our self image. And before we know it, it's going to be who we are and it's going to be how we feel about ourselves and how we see ourselves as bowlers and maybe in other aspects of your life as well. The last point from this book that I wanna bring up is that your past is not your prison. This can be for bowling, this can be for many other aspects of your life. Your past is not your prison. And if we made some errant shots earlier or had a bad game or two, it's okay. We're human beings, give yourself some grace. Moving forward, staying in the present moment, one shot at a time, one frame at a time, one game at a time, and that can help us to move forward and change that self-image for the better so we can have a better game, both physically but also mentally. Thanks for watching, guys. I really hope that this video has been helpful to you with your mental game and bowling, and I hope that you will read Lonnie Bassham's book with winning in mind. If you've already read it, I would love to hear from you and your tips that you've pulled away from that book that have helped you as well, or other books that you found helpful for bowling 
counseling and in sports psychology in general. If you got some tips from this video, please like the video. Subscribe if you'd like to see other videos like this on tips and tricks and strategies with coaching and bowling. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.